Okay, some old school dessert recipes are hard to beat, but it would be hard to find uh, a way to, to make any of them vegan friendly, I would think. That's why Laura Crotty released the Little Vegan Dessert Cookbook where she revises vintage recipes with a vegan spin. Laura recently showed me how to make her vegan coffee cake. Oh, the first step is I basically just put the flour right ahead in my large bowl here. It's a spelt and oat flour. And to that, I'm gonna add, here's the, the jazzy part, a lot of spices, a lot of aromatics are going into this. So we have one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg, a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger, as well as half a teaspoon of salt and half a quarter teaspoon, sorry, an eighth of a teaspoon, pardon me, a lot of spices here, an eighth of <laughs> a teaspoon of ground cloves. So if you got all that, um, it all goes right in there with the flour. And that then, is a whole lot of flavor you just dumped in there. That's what that is. Lot. This will be great for Thanksgiving or Christmas. And then into that, one half cup of chopped walnuts, just pour it right in there. And then what you want to do is toss Toss the walnuts right in there. You want to get them in there with the flour. Just lightly coat them in the flour. So it's all in there. Just set that aside for a minute. And then we're going to go right on into our, our wet ingredients. So one cup of canned pumpkin. Just go right in there. I don't recommend fresh pumpkin. It's a little too watery. And the canned okay. pumpkin works perfectly for this. So half a cup of coconut sugar. Coconut sugar, okay. Coconut sugar, which is really mild and it's wonderful for this recipe. One quarter cup of no taste oil. I love um, sunflower oil, but you can use canola. You can use whatever vegetable oil blend you have in your cabinet or at home, no big deal. And then uh, three tablespoons of aquafaba. That's gonna be your, your egg replacer. And okay, aquafaba, define, you need to define that for me. Yeah, because I am not is, a vegan. That is just, a fancy word for bean liquid, bean juice. So oh. and beans you have in your cabinet will work just fine. You just want to pay attention to the thickness of the bean liquid. You want it to resemble that of an egg. So some beans will go straight from the can into your recipe like black beans or um, great northern beans, cannellini beans. They have a really nice viscosity and nice thickness just like an egg. If you okay. have garbanzo beans though, they're a little watery. So you're going to want to reduce them to get that desired thickness. And then, Interesting. So those are, those are essentially egg substitutes then for a vegan. They, they are, recipe. yeah. So three tablespoons of bean liquid or aquafaba equals one egg. That's it, fine. Is it hard to get this, this aquafaba, which sound, you know, to me, it sounds like a foreign word. I'm not no, familiar with it, but. I honestly don't know where that, why that word started. I don't know why they don't just say bean liquid. Maybe that, maybe it just doesn't sound appetizing. So. Yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, when you bake with bean liquid, you don't taste it. It is, it works just like an egg. It is so cool. It, it's a oh, really great. great little trick. And then the last ingredient is one teaspoon of vanilla extract right in there. So we can find this recipe along with many others in the little vegan dessert cookbook. That's correct. Which, uh, boy, I've, I've looked through this and there are so many tempting treats in there. Mm -hmm. Everything from peanut butter cups to mints. I mean, just amazing stuff. And it, I, I haven't tasted it yet, but just to look at it, it just looks spectacular. I wanted to make recipes that were plant-based that were just like the classic recipes that we love and we enjoy. And you would uh -huh. never know unless I told you that they're plant-based. And that's the whole goal of the cookbook, just to have these great recipes. If you want something lighter, if you're interested in plant-based foods, if you just want more, vegetables in your diet or wholesome foods why not do it in a dessert do it in a fun way by the way i'm just adding the wet ingredients into the dry mix here it's on the okay uh, this recipe is going to cook for 50 minutes in a 350 degree oven okay. but i recommend checking it after about 30 minutes because everyone's oven is different some people if you have an oven like mine which is really strong after about 35 minutes this is done and prick it in several spots with your toothpick. Don't just prick it once because there could be a spot that's not quite done. And oh, good. Upset if it, you take that, it's not done. <laughs> so, so this um, batter is going to be a little thick. Gotcha. Don't worry. That is how it's supposed to be. Okay. And you just scoop it right into the pan and spread it out in the pan. And then after you get it spread out in your pan, 
we're going to make a streusel topping that we're going to put right on top of this. Into your last bowl, you're going to put half a cup of spelt flour and half a cup of coconut sugar. And let's see, about a third cup of chopped walnuts. And then last but not least, a quarter cup or four tablespoons of non-dairy butter right over the top of my loaf pan here, right okay. on there, into the oven that goes. And now it looks like a little bit of a mush, but that yeah. comes out all nice and crummy and wonderful. This is what it looks like when it's done. Oh! It's just a really nice coffee cake. And, Beautiful. Uh, it's, it's wonderful, and it also goes really well. I recommend a very, a very big, fat, slather of spread. The worst thing about Zoom, no taste testing. Uh, you can find a link to Laura's cookbook and the recipe for that delicious looking coffee cake on New Day's website. Now is a time when small businesses need all the support that they can get. Coming up next, we'll tell you about the nonprofit that's helping out LGBTQ business owners in our community.